Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about one of Wedge's opinions on cheaters and MTG Arena. So Renard is a Hearthstone player, and as a Hearthstone player, he's very good. He has many more people follow him on Twitch and on social media than they do any professional Magic player. And you will find that is a common thing that's happening where the Wizard of Coast is paying these paying these Hearthstone players to promote their MTG Arena game, even if some of them have been banned in the past, and even if they admitted that they cheated, and even if they have badmouthed Wizards of the Coast. Now this goes against what Wedge has always said. Wedge has never said anything bad about Wizards of the Coast. Or he'll put it in a way that makes them look good. But here we have a person very similar to Unsleeve Media in terms of his ire who was banned and last out. He wrote an article which I will show you. And the article is very demeaning of Wizard of Coast and the cheating, the system that detected that he was cheating, which he later admitted he was, but he wasn't happy that he was caught. So Wedge says, seriously, MTG Arena, this is really disappointing. I'm on Wizard Coast side more often than most. But I mean, come on, you're paying someone to play Arena who was legit banned from Magic. He didn't quit, though. Wasn't he DCI banned for life? It's concerning that Wizard of Coast value their product over integrity of the game. At this rate, they'll have MTG headquarters as a feature streamer for the next event. And of course, uh, Eli Kaplan, who is a massive troll, <laughs> does, you know. Um, anyway, my point is, I think they will have one to leave media, uh, according to the template, which is to find the biggest people, uh, even if they had backgrounds where it's not great, and pay them to stream it. And the reason is they do not give two blanks about Magic the Gathering content creators, if you're small. And they would actually rather have a Hearthstone creator because they view that as a giant pot of money that has been unexplored. They know a Magic the Gathering content creator is going to cover the news, and as Wedge says, in a positive way. I mean, he pretty much admits it. He's more positive than most. He will be back, just like Alex Puccini in his free pass. I'm going to make another video exploring the relationship between this guy and Alex Puccini. It is very remarkable that at some point in time, they tweeted each other and they had a very honest discussion on DCI bans and what that meant. And I think Alex's suspension, I didn't notice until I read his tweet, was actually increased because of some of his actions. Probably because his Twitter and Facebook reach is about 100,000 more people than most active Matt pro Magic players. His Twitch has had 44 million views, and this is a marketing exercise. Basically this, I wouldn't be shocked if the decision to invite people to the event was done by a marketing or PR person. So, that's what they want. They want numbers. They want Hearthstone. They want views. They don't care about cheating. They don't, I, I know one of the main argument you guys will have is that, hey, you can't cheat online. You can. You can have someone play for you, right? That would be cheating, wouldn't it? Um, wouldn't it be like, oh, hey, if you are a, um attractive female and you have someone who's really good at magic play for you while you stream and now suddenly you're like the best magic player ever, that would be kind of cheating, right? Or if you were fighting for a Pro Tour event and you had your friend play for you. Or in many cases, just like in poker, you have a whole room of people. You have a whole room of people making decisions as a, com as a committee on what action you should do for one of those people to get a Pro Tour invite. So this is a purely a numbers uh, it is a game of numbers. The bigger the number you have in terms of subscribers, the more ways that a coach will treat you like a human being. Now, of course, they're not going to offer you health insurance in any case, in any, no matter how much your numbers increase. 
But it is very interesting to see that the mana source has identified a issue in the uh, the reason that I think he takes offense at this is pe not really because of cheating. Cheating is always bad, but he has never called out cheaters before. Uh, in the way I call out cheaters on my channel, to the point that they have to uh, block my videos. <laughs> I have to take down some videos. Um, so he's not that critical on cheaters, in my opinion, mainly because if he would be, he would call them on his channel and they would, they would never hear the end of it because his channel is five times the size of mine. So theoretically, or four times, no. I haven't looked at his channel recently. Six, maybe seven times? Uh, you know, that would be way more impactful than tweeting it into oblivion. So this money that's supposed to be earmarked for magic content creators is all being spent. And you can see with the silver showcase with Brian Kibler, some more Hearthstone players. Uh, when you get paid 12 and a half thousand for just showing up that day. That's all you got to do. You don't need to win. Just show up, get your 12 and a half thousand and you're good. That money should be going to magic players. That money should be going to magic content creators. You don't need to give them twelve and a half thousand dollars. You could give them a hundred dollars a product that costs you ten dollars less to make, ten dollars or less to make. But they don't do that. They really focus on Hearthstone this, Hearthstone that. And the key is, if they play Magic Arena, more people will be attracted to the game. And in the so this is the dude. And he wrote an article. This is in his own words what he's saying, which is cra pretty crazy that they would pay him money to stream something that he ripped so hard. And it was in 2013, of course. But uh, it is a big problem. It is a big problem that you have people who, for lack of better words, pretty much probably don't even like the game very much. And they're doing it for the money while with the stain the background it doesn't get better than there are many examples of wizard of coach throwing money at hearthstone players uh to play magic arena so their uh, followers would you know but they don't do that to magic players and that's kind of what wedge is talking about it's a very interesting issue andre young yuck this editorial contains some strong opinions. Draft Magic is publishing the article while neither condemning or condoning any statements. You know that this article is going to get spicy when you start the article with that. As some of you already know, I was suspended by the DCI on the Tuesday following my PTQ win in March. The details are written later in the article for those interested. I don't want my suspension to be the primary focus of this, but I recognize that a lot of you are cu curious about it so i'll go over my thoughts on the matter since no part of me plans to be part of this community in the future unless i'm paid i added that part i guess i don't have to censor myself either a lot of you will be pretty upset with me while reading this as a result when i got an email telling me that i was suspended it was three months after the dq that caused it and just as long since i heard anything about it I went through a mix of emotions in the first hour, from anxious to relieved to pissed off about screwing everyone else in the PTQ top 8 by waiting until Tuesday to ban me. I told them I was livid about the timing and asking them to at least give the invite to my buddy who finished second. The more I thought about it though, the more I realized that this was a blessing in disguise. Magic had just been my way of putting off life. For a few years now, I and I stopped having fun playing since the release of RTR. So it's nobody's fault by my own. Again, this is a guy who went on a rampage. He went on a rampage, wrote an article, basically ripping Wizard of Coast apart piece by piece because he didn't expect to ever be part of the community again. And a little bit of gold goes his way, and now he loves it. Again, he wrote this article, and I will make a video on the whole article because it's worth reading. It's no longer live. You have to uh, go use a Wayback Machine to pull it up. But it's not live for some reason because he's being sponsored now, and it would be very, very hypocritical for them to sponsor someone who rips 
Wizard of Coast so hard. I mean, this letter is on par with Unsleeve Media's kind of assault on... Uh... Now, this obviously, it was covered much less, but the tone is very similar. Uh, who is this guy? He was a known cheater before his suspension, which was pretty well known for the people who lived in his area, but he's one of the biggest Hearthstone streamers and is already familiar with magic. I think it would be stupid for them to ignore a presence like that. It wouldn't... I wouldn't be surprised if they had a conversation with him beforehand regarding how he needs to act in the sponsored stream. Certain members of the community that are already very vocal negatively about Wizard of the Coast, MTGO developers, and MTG scene in general should not be surprised at all that they aren't invited to something like this. So... Let's read some of this stuff. Sucks that you have possibly ruined somebody's chance that actually deserved a shot at the PT. Absolutely disgusting. You have to retweet the good things that happen in life. Armed with 140 characters of evidence in the Omni Science it entails a bunch of talentless blankheads, none of whom had spoken to me once in their lives, were quick to call me the scum of the earth and rejoice in the suffering of others. So... He is pretty much burning everything, burning every bridge he can find. You see Cedric Phillips here. He's burning that bridge. And he's calling them names. He's calling Wizard of the Coast names. And yet, he is a sponsored content creator for many times. A paid sponsored content creator for MTG Arena just because he has the, the views. Stay classy. Twitter, of course, of course, none of this was new to me. I had already been dealing with Twitch TV chat for eight months. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of MTG fan base also happens to be socially inept men in their mid-30s and 40s, which gets frustrating seeing the Twilight blank blank be 50 times a player that they are in the game that they played against since its exceptions in the 1800s. Somewhere around the 50th time I was called a blank player by a Michael Moore lookalike that felt he's a god's gift to the game because of two FNMs he 4 owed. And it goes on. I mean, I don't know. Like, this is probably not the best brand ambassador you could have picked. I know you really tried hard to hide the article, but here, yikes. Uh, Alex Pacini. It's now apparent to me that I was wrong. I sincerely apologize to everyone I offended and will try to improve myself more in the future. I truly feel bad for my actions and thus have been further punished. I have no ill will towards any parties involved. Consider my eyes opened. Now, I've known Alex for a long while, and this seems extremely uncharacteristic of him. After asking him what happened, he explained that they extended his suspension by six months because of some Star City Games live commentary he streamed and a Facebook thread he posted in. We all know about those. Very dangerous Facebook meme threads, right? They're very dangerous. And, I mean, this is who Wizard of Coast is paying? Ooh, yikes. Anyway, bye guys.